Um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit today about purpose um, and um, just kind of to take a minute and just ask yourself, like, if you have a purpose in life, what is your purpose? Um, I think that's something that people spend a lot of time and sometimes money um, thinking about and trying to figure out, like, why am I here? What is my purpose? What do I do? Um, so I wanted to share a scripture with you today, which is from Genesis 28. Um, and... This is Jacob's Jacob's dream. Um, people talk about Jacob's ladder, so you've probably heard of that at some point. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's start in verse 13. So Genesis 28, 13. Um, well, let's just start at 10. It says, Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So, yeah, I really love this scripture. I really love Genesis in general. It's, like, so strange and beautiful and awesome. Um, but what I really like here is that Jacob wakes up from this dream, and he says, surely this is, um, surely God is in this place, and I was not aware of it. Um, so that is, like, the world that we live in. It says, this is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Um, so if we're living in the house of God and the gate of heaven, um, if we understand that, then it kind of changes our purpose. Um, so I want to go to a scripture that kind of mirrors that language that we hear in Genesis. And that's Matthew 28. where it says, um, Matthew 28, 18, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So in this passage, we kind of hear that same sense of like you're going to spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south because he says go and make disciples of all nations and then here in genesis it says i am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and i will bring you back to this land i will not leave you until i have done what i have promised you in the same way that in matthew 28 20 he says and surely i am with you always to the very end of the age so um Jacob wakes up from this dream with a new understanding of where he is and what uh, and what needs to be done. So basically he's like, okay, <laughs> if this is the house of God, I didn't realize it, but if this is the house of God, if this is the gate of heaven, then that changes how I live my life, right? Um, so here in John 12, um, we see that it says in John 12, um, 24, Jesus is speaking, and he says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. So this is again about um, not 
loving our life in the world, not loving the life that like, you know, that Jacob had before he had this dream or this vision and saw that actually earth and heaven are connected and there is a way to get there. There's a staircase. Um, and Jesus talks a lot about how he is the way. Um, I will hopefully read that passage as well. Um, yeah, this is so awesome. Um, so this in John 14, Jesus says to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Um, so, yeah, so there's like this stairway to heaven, <laughs> right? <laughs> there's a way to get there, and that way is Jesus. Um, and so Jesus is also called the Word. Um, and so the Word is Jesus. Jesus is the Word. The Word is the Bible. So there's only one way to get there, and that way is through the Bible and through obeying what the Bible says to do. Um, but we don't do it alone. Like when we do commit to losing our life in the world, losing what we thought we knew, losing what you know seems what's t tangible um, and seems real, um, we actually have Jesus Himself um, to help us get there, to like pull us up that stairway. Um, so that's really encouraging. But um, I believe I started off talking about purpose. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to challenge you today to think about what is your purpose in life? Um, because there is a purpose that Jesus gives us. He says, anyone who, um, anyone who knows me, anyone who loves me will live like I do. So if you think about how Jesus lived, what he did was he went and he told the truth to people. Um, he made disciples. Um, and he kept his eyes focused on God entirely. Um, so does that mean that he didn't have any fun? No, he was at like wedding feasts, turning water into wine, you know. Um, he was like breaking bread constantly with his disciples. Um, and he was going from town to town, meeting with all different kinds of people. So it's, uh, it's a beautiful life, but the life that we have to live in order to be saved, the way, has to look like Jesus' life. And if it doesn't look like Jesus' life, then it's then that's not it. <laughs> um, so I would just challenge you um, to think about what your purpose is in life and to think about if your purpose lines up with what God's purpose is. Um, and if you're not sure, then I would encourage you to reach out um, and study the Bible. So we know that the Bible is... That's the way. That's what God says, is that the Bible is the way to find him. Um, so I would encourage you, um, if you're thinking about it at all today, to just reach out um, and study the Bible. Um, you can get in touch with me at samira, S-A-M-I-R-A dot franklin at gmail.com. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.